like this. Mm-hmm. And we're um, going to have these mugs. These mugs. Yep. Take a drink of this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. of the Liberator Podcast. I'm Sam Riley here with James Silverman as usual. And this week we have Nathan Weiser and Dusty Devers, actually both mine and James's pastor on today to talk about a new documentary uh, that they just made, just came out, uh, Storm Comes Rolling Down the Plane. Thanks for, for coming on, guys. It yeah. is our pleasure. I'm yeah. so thankful to be here with you guys. You guys are such an encouragement to my family, to me particularly, my family, my children, um, and our church, and we are just thrilled that you have chosen to, and God has led you here, but you've also been obedient to pursue membership at our church and then join us, and uh, you guys are extremely fruit-bearing young men, and I told my uh, wife last night uh, after we had, you guys had left our house that uh, I would love for my young my younger boys and my 17 year old to be more like you guys are at your age right now than i was at your age so i'm very thankful for you guys wow thank you that's quite an honor uh especially coming from you dusty so we really appreciate that and we appreciate you time as well um Mm -hmm. and uh really excited about this because so we were all there on friday at the rescue those conference when uh the premiere of this documentary happened and uh yeah ended like standing ovation, mm-hmm. crying, tears, hugs. I, I was actually, me and you were, were delayed on the ovation because when it ended, I just reached over and gave you uh, a hug. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was so, like, do I stand? What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I James, wasn't going to bless you. James said that he almost kissed you. It's I true. I, I was <laughs> like, this close. <laughs> Could have been violence that night. And, uh, yeah, it's crazy. The, the storm that is response. coming is the amount of tears. Mm, you know, the, the flood. The flood after better. the storm or with the storm, right? Yeah. It's yeah. the tears <laughs> of the saint. There you go. Enjoy. Well, whenever Bradley Pierce jumped up so it ended and, and brett and i were like oh my gosh that was so great and bradley pierce jumps up he and was he the first one cheer and he was the first <laughs> oh, one really like, <gasps> and then blake and i mean uh, uh brett and i just started getting emotional ourselves we're like wow this really hit and huh. it was you know when you're making a documentary or making a movie like i've got so much experience uh being that this is the first one right yeah totally. um, but yeah. when you're making one you know, you're editing, and you're in the trenches, and you're digging around through yeah, things. Yeah, totally. And, and it's piecemealed, and even more so for Nathan, uh, you know, sorting through elbow deep every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then after it came together, and we're like, this is really good. Three yeah. weeks in, <laughs> three weeks before, we showed it to several folks. We're like, oh, man, um, <laughs> I hope we can land this plane. Yeah. And yeah. whenever people jumped up and started cheering and there was an mm-hmm. ovation. I was like, that plane landed and everybody was cheering on the plane like, this is the best <laughs> landing we've ever had. <laughs> it, was, it, it was emotional for us, yeah. man. Yeah, it was, Not just it was for a good this moment. topic, too. This this is the best documentary I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh, wow. Ever. That's crazy. And I, okay. I watch a lot of documentaries. So. <laughs> wow. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a testimony to a lot of things, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, Nathan did an incredible job. It's sh- it's shocking how good a job he did, <laughs> uh, and and Logan helping him out. Uh, but top to bottom, that documentary with the filming and the script and the editing, everybody expects. But Nathan also did the music. Yeah, you know, and there are some songs in there. I told Nathan, I was. 
we need to release those as singles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, How long yeah. it ring? His it's voice ringing in my ear right now. It's been <laughs> ringing in my ear since I first heard it. How long? Mm-hmm. Oh Lord, will you stand far away mm-hmm. and hide yourself in times of trouble? It, it is, um, if you can work that into a psalm to sing and worship, yeah, that mm-hmm. would be excellent. Mm-hmm. But there's that part, but and, and the work that Nathan put in, but there's also the fact of the topic and mm-hmm. the the theology that we're discussing that is on mm-hmm. the ground, saving, seeking to rescue little image bearers in their most vulnerable place Mm -hmm. who are being led to slaughter by the thousands in Oklahoma every year, by the thousands in the United States every day, and by the hundred thousands, 150,000 or so around the world Mm -hmm. every day that we know of. So there's not been a documentary quite like this Mm -hmm. ever made. And so I think by God's grace, it, he providentially made it uh, the right time and yeah. brought all the pieces together. Not that it's perfect, you know, it's right. not it's not the canon of Scripture, right. uh, nor is it even a creed or confession, but it is, I think, a faithful representation of what's going on right now mm-hmm. and yep. what God is providentially arranging. Yep. Yeah, yep. that's awesome. So let's watch a trailer real quick, and then we're going to come back with uh, just response to the trailer, and we'll talk about some of the themes of the documentary. I was happy thinking that just giving to certain pro-life organizations and voting for pro-life politicians was, well, yeah, that's good. I'm doing my part. I checked the box of loving my neighbor and, I mean, I have been wrecked by the Lord concerning my apathy towards my neighbors. What would it look like if we spoke to culture as if Christ were really on his throne? If we've got this verse that says we must rescue those being taken off to death, that we must, you know, that we must stand up for the fatherless. If that's if that's what the Bible says, how is what you're doing doing that? How is it rescuing them? How do, how do we stop all child sacrifice? look back over almost 50 years of incremental approach to eliminating abortion. What have we accomplished? Virtually nothing. What I realized was that we were trying to fight abortion as if God were not real. What are we going to do? Going to shirk our responsibility further and for longer? I must, I must stand up for the immediate uncompromising end of abortion. And I must stand against anything short of that. You must praise God, confess your sins, and repent with me. To see December third, twenty twenty one, being in the past, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's no longer <laughs> like <laughs> looming. Yeah. <laughs> mm. All right. So that is the trailer. Really, really good stuff, and highlights uh, a few of the themes that are that are in there. Right. So, like, repent with us. Like, repentance was a big theme mm-hmm. uh, throughout. But one of the things we'll, we'll get to repentance in a minute. One of the things that I was, if not close to the most, the most impressed with, was how everything was weaved together, mm-hmm. and so when we were first kind of conceptualizing everything, it was like, man, we're trying to kind of tell a narrative of the history of the movement and kind of move through the documentary that way, like over time. Mm -hmm. But we're also trying to move through the documentary from tenet one to two to three to four to five, Mm -hmm. you know, the tenets of abolitionism. And so, man, how is this going to weave together? It's like, it's almost two different tracks. Are we biting off too much? But you just, you weaved it all together so excellently. I just really, really impressed with that. Um, Oh, and by the way, you guys were very instrumental, both of you guys, in um, giving really good feedback throughout the process and 
um, even helping us with wording different things. And uh, I know I've called you specifically probably like 15 to 20 times just like, hey, I need a video of this specific thing. Does that exist <laughs> anywhere? Yeah. Or uh, I need a quote from an abolitionist that says something along this lines. Does that exist? And, you know, so I, it's definitely def- not like um, – I didn't have help. I mean, the credits, if if you watch through this, the credits are way longer than I expected them to be. Like, I had a ton of help from the movement um, that was really instrumental. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's good. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about the, the, the themes of the documentary. Let's start with, with repentance. So in what ways is repentance demonstrated and kind of, uh, yeah, just demonstrated to the viewers of the movie? Yeah, so um, that's something that we thought was really important. Um, it, it's it's more than just, like, we've always pitched it as it, this is a documentary that shows the history of abolitionism and also, um, like, gives its, get, is a primer for abolitionism, but it's also, like, a really emotional story that um, mm-hmm. goes through probably, like, four or five different examples of just repentance in someone's life. And... Um, it, not only is the theme um, just of repentance, but really the joy that comes with repentance mm-hmm. and um, the uh, the joy of like what comes on the other side of that and the beauty of the gospel within repentance. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, w- it's, a, it's even a little, a little on the nose. Um, there's a point where we literally even just show chalk on the ground that says repent, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it, it, that that the really I think tells a really great story. That's it's it's like kind of a rich thing to mm-hmm. really dwell on the joy and the melancholy mm-hmm. behind saying I was wrong, but I get to I get to step forward in this new ethic that is more Christ-like and more biblical. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I get the joy of knowing that um, I no longer have to walk in a compromised position or anything mm-hmm. like that. Right. Yeah. Russell was saying, he was saying that, you know, a lot of people in the abolitionist movement are going to, we're, we're kind of used to seeing really powerful stories of repentance, but I think a lot of people are going to see for the first time mm-hmm. uh, things that they have never seen, mm-hmm. like national or at least state level, big time leaders repenting, people calling what they did in their own abortions murder. Um, that kind of thing is so rare to see, especially I've been in the pro-life movement for a long time and Mm -hmm. I really rarely saw people who are post-abortive talk about their abortion in the way that, um, a lot of the women and the men involved in the abolitionist movement talk about it and are featured in this documentary. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be a real wake up call to a lot of people just, Oh, that's what repentance looks like. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't know that that's what it's supposed to look like, you know? And if you think about it, I'm sorry, if you think about it, like, uh, the abolition movement isn't y'all don't have or we don't have the first mover advantage in the anti-abortion space you know the pro-life movement was there first Mm -hmm. so anyone who's entering the abolitionist movement has to go through a repentance Mm -hmm. so we're all gonna um see the value in that and we hope that other people see that from our perspective that like this is a really cool thing to go through Mm -hmm. it's more than just a shameful thing, you know, mm-hmm. it's a really beautiful and holy thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. The, n- the nature of the Christian life is one of repentance, like right. Martin Luther said. I mean, we start the Christian walk with one of our first responses to the work of God by the Holy Spirit regenerating us, one of our first fruits of, of faith is repent. Confess right. your sin, repent, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we start to bear fruit in keeping with that original repentance. Mm-hmm. And that repentance is a continual thing. So really what we want to help people see is something that we're trying to walk in daily with our our own relationship with the Lord, our relationship with our, our families and with our churches and with our brothers and sisters in Christ is like we're sinners Mm -hmm. you know like don't be afraid of the fact that you need to confess that Mm -hmm. and self-disclose and receive the grace that is offered to you it's gifted to you that grace is gifted to you and that grace of repentance is a good thing it's not 
a shameful thing. It's a glorious yeah. thing. Amen. It's a kindness of the Lord. That It's the kindness of our Lord, his person, who he is, and his work that leads us to repentance. When we see that all that I have in Jesus Christ is better for me than what I formerly put my hope and trust in, then it's a it's a outworking of my response to his kindness, yeah, his generosity. Mm-hmm. So we want that to be recognized throughout this this documentary is it's a it's a good thing mm-hmm. yeah. to receive that grace and to walk in it, whether it has to do with you coming from a position that uh, affirm that you can kill some babies and protect others, that duality there, or if it has to do with how you're treating your wife mm-hmm. or your mm-hmm. children or your friends. Mm-hmm. We need to receive the granted gift of repentance and then bear fruit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One of the issues with a lot of kind of repentances or professed repentances is there's a very um, kind of, fleshly tendency to lessen the repentance, you know, say, well, Mm -hmm. you know, this person was wrong in this way. And so therefore it wasn't as bad or I wasn't wrong at all because of this and this and that and that. But what's so awesome about all of the examples in this documentary, um, whether it be like a major pro-life leader here in Oklahoma repenting and, you know, saying I am an abolitionist or whether it be kind of a a guy who was very early on, uh, very against the abolitionist movement. And then also a post-abortive mother, there was none of that from any of them. You know, and in, in some of the cases, maybe maybe there were real circumstances that kind of led them, or maybe even would have led a reasonable person to where they were. But it was like, no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to lessen this. I'm not gonna try to say it was other people's fault or there's mm. there's reasons for why I did what I did that were that were good or true or whatever. But it's like, no, like I was wrong, and I'm not gonna lessen that. I'm going to say that and let it be as beautiful as it can be. Because if, if I'm lessening the severity of it and saying, well, you know, it wasn't that bad. You're lessening the beauty and the power of that repentance, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, and so that's what's I think really powerful just about the examples of repentance that happened in the documentary. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, yeah, and it's good to start the discussion of like the themes of the documentary from the position of repentance because all of the documentary is going over the history of the gospel working on people to bring about repentance about the specific sin of abortion apathy and. Uh, not combating abortion in a godly and good way that the Bible, letting the Bible speak to the issue. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, let's talk a a little bit about how the documentary tells the story of the abolitionist movement in Oklahoma. You're the one who uh, put the work into it. Yeah, um, it was was really cool uh, kind of getting into this originally. I didn't realize how rich the history has been over the last 10 years. Um, and, uh, I really don't know if that there, there's really a place online or anywhere that really accounts it. Um, it's all kind of just scrolling through Facebook. Uh, um, so I really wanted to, or we really wanted to, um, tell the story in a really good, like overview way, um, Mm -hmm. and, uh, make it about repentance, but also, you know, talk about, you know, just brush really quickly on, you know, how was the church's response to it in the beginning? And the, what did they do in the beginning? Um, and, you know, why did they do what they did? Or ab- abolish human abortion and um, groups like that. Or, um, and, uh, y- you know, we get a little bit into uh, the historical slavery abolition movement that was reignited. Um, unfortunately, an hour and a half, you can't really get super deep into it. Um, yeah. But just pulling from them what we need to know for now. Um, so that's, I think that's really a necessary, uh, component to introducing abolition to someone is, uh, reckoning with, you know, the name, the namesake of abolitionism coming from the past evils that were abolished. Um, but also, you know, what does the movement look like from its reignition in 2010 to today? Um, and I really think like you said, it's a beautiful story of repentance in many ways, um, but it's really also just a beautiful story of the church being perfected and um, rising to meet the evil of its day in the face of great apathy. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, we, want, we definitely wanted to tell that story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I thought you guys did a really good job, and I've, I haven't have been around for that whole history. I've been around since about 2018, 2019, mm-hmm. uh, but I was you know looking over at, at Russell and Josh and some of the people who have been there since the beginning, uh, mm-hmm. and I know that they were just, uh, yeah, 
very, very enthused to see, uh, to see the story getting told because that history, yeah. uh, it was obviously, there was a lot of disputes going on around that time. And mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I really liked that, that, that Brett talked about was just like, yeah, you know, they, they may have been, you know, some, some, some sharp tongued young men from Norman, but like, that's who it's people like that is often who God uses, right? If, if I'm not going to reject, you know, salvation by faith alone, cause it came from, or didn't come from, but was kind of reignited by Martin Luther. Mm -hmm. Right. He's like, but okay, the, the, there may be some bones or whatever, but I needed someone to grab me and shake me mm -hmm. and saying, you call, say to me, you call yourself a Christian? What are you doing about the Holocaust? Yeah. And so I just think it was, uh, it was done really, really well. The history mm -hmm. is traced, you know, kind of through chapter one, two, three, and four. Chapter four being the point at which the storm is just taken over Oklahoma, which you did a really good job with the special effects there. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, just man, the the history, everything. I thought I thought was done really really well. Yeah. So one of the things that I, I, I wouldn't that I would hope wouldn't uh, put people who are outside of Oklahoma off, right? Is that we can only we only have a limited time. Mm -hmm. We have to make cuts. Yeah, uh, we can't include everybody, and there have been there are people like Rusty Thomas was in the film, yeah, and he represents uh, Operation Save America. You know, if we were in Ohio or in Texas where Rusty is, we would tell the story of other abolition groups and movements yep. who came into abolition. Um, but we're trying to we're trying to focus on keep our focus narrow so that we could tell a cogent story. Absolutely. And, um, even though there's a whole lot of players in Oklahoma, it, you know, telling the story just included certain pieces and aspects that, that made it made sense. Now, if we mm -hmm. had a 10 hour docu series, <laughs> yeah. a whole lot more would be added and a mm -hmm. whole lot of other players. And we had an extremely limited budget. You know, mm -hmm. we, we bootstrap this funding from, a whole lot of abolitionists, you know, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know the theological makeup of most of them, but my guess is probably 95% were abolitionists or at least <laughs> yeah. were at abolitionist churches. Uh, and, uh, so this is a fruit of a whole lot of abolitionists. Unfortunately, we can't we just couldn't tell the story of everybody, but yeah. we hope that, yeah. that people would see their own stories in there and have memories yep. that came up. Yeah. I remember that. You know, we, we, we did, I think it was a, a sufficient job for what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the church is everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. And I think even if you are in, you know, Ireland or something like that, you mm -hmm. can uh, really identify with the story of the church rising up or the church being perfected because that's something that we all look forward to. Um, that's something that we all read in our scriptures um, as something that we should hope for. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. Yeah. Jesus promises that he began this good work and he will see it to completion. And yep. mm -hmm. we think this is part of that process. And we are just incredibly thankful to be involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's a lot yeah. to learn, even, you know, from the story of the most conservative state. Oklahoma is probably one of the most conservative states in the mm -hmm. nation. Um, there's a lot to learn even there about how churches wake up to the sufferings of their pre-born neighbors uh, because it's not a different mechanism that makes a California churches wake up or Washington, D.C. or New York or anything like that. It's the same mechanism. It's the gospel mm -hmm. acting on the hearts of people yep. to bring about repentance that mm -hmm. God is granting to them. And it's not going to happen any other way uh, other than the way that it's happening here and the way that it's happening in so many other places. That is the gospel going forth and being brought into conflict with the evil of abortion and people applying the implications of that gospel to their pre-war neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, I've been rescued. I should go there for and rescue others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So one of the things that really makes it unique is the fact that it does this. It tells a history. It tells, you know, the kind of emotionally gripping stories of, of repentance of different, different figures in the movement. Um, but it also, it teaches the ideas uh, really, really well. And so just talk about um, ideologically what you were trying to do with this movie in terms of getting ideas out there. Well, as a Johnny come lately in the movement, I figured man, we need a good acronym for, for a memory tool, you know, so I floated a few ideas by some people and um, had a little help from my friends. <laughs> and uh, Gates came out of it. And so yeah. we Gates stands for gospel-centered, aligned providentially, through the church, engaged biblically, and sought immediately without compromise. 
So we knew that we had to tell, if you're going to do the first, you know, documentary on abolition, you got to tell the story where it came from, but you have to define that movement. Uh, Mm -hmm. And we, it's, it's almost like a narratival version of a, Mm -hmm. of a statement on, on like a, a resolution or a statement on abolition. Yeah. So. It was difficult, though. Yeah, yeah. And it may not be the first documentary on abolition is or on right. abolition, but it's the first one that kind of ideologically goes through all the different theological tenets yeah. of the movement. Yeah, right. so it really is the first and only one so far that's done anything like that. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, we definitely uh, got a little bit of flack in the feedback era because we went out of order. We didn't yeah. spell Gates correctly. <laughs> uh, uh, but you know, it's also because we're trying to tell a story at the same time. You know, mm-hmm. so we can yep. we can say something with the history and then go, this would be a great time to talk about through the church, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, one of those things personally that I was really excited about was getting to end with Aligned Providentially. You know, Mm -hmm. after all this stuff, we're going through Psalm 10 with the music and we're saying, you know, how long uh, will you stand far away um, talking, uh, David talking to Paul, (laughs) David talking (laughs) to God. Mm -hmm. um, And, uh, you know, really the answer in that uh, psalm is, but you do see mm-hmm. and you are king, you mm-hmm. know. So it's really cool to end the documentary with a line providentially because really the answer to all of this is we rest on the kingship of Christ and um, we rest in his providence and what he's promised that he will do. Um, and of the increase of his government yeah. and of peace, there will be no end. Mm-hmm. The zeal of Yahweh of hosts will do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The zeal of our God is going to bring about the repentance and faith and the end of abortion in this world. Mm -hmm. Not just in Oklahoma, but in this world. And he is footstooling his enemies on the daily, Mm -hmm. on the moment by moment through the gospel Mm -hmm. and through them reapplying the gospel to our lives. And this is the power of God that we have to offer people. We mm-hmm. have this this good news, and that's why the church is so powerful because we have the word of Christ, which is conquering. So we're not we're not trying to um that's what what that's another thing that we tried to keep very clear in this uh, documentary is that we're not trusting in the laurels of someone's ability to argue something mm-hmm. or in even in the power of, of persuasion in this uh, documentary with the effects or with the, the storytelling. But we wanted to make sure the gospel was clear and that the gospel is the backbone of this. And whenever mm-hmm. you hear the message about the person and work of Jesus Christ to rescue sinners from our rebellion and the wrath that we deserve— and give us eternal life, forgiveness of sins, reconcile us to the Father. Yep. When you hear that message, you can go and tell this too. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have to have a documentary to do right. it. You Absolutely. don't have to have Russell Hunter next to you or mm-hmm. James Riley. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the That's my name. Both of them. <laughs> you don't have name. to have the combo of, of both of those guys standing next to you at the mill. You know, mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think one of the things that's really unique and uh, cool about the abolitionist movement is, although we don't need, we shouldn't need the best artwork or the best documentaries or anything like that to persuade people, there is something for everyone in the movement. And we get a guy like Nathan Weiser involved who's extremely, extremely talented at making these kinds of things. And And um, nobody knew how talented. Yeah. <laughs> Not even Nathan. <laughs> this drew the best out of Nathan. He discovered it. <laughs> yeah. But it, it is like it's a it's a work <laughs> as unto as unto God, not unto, you know, any any particular human audience or anything like that. Of course we want yeah. a bunch of people to see it, but it mm-hmm. is working well, doing good things well because God's the one who is ultimately commissioning us to do these kinds of things. So yeah. Um, I think that's it, it's it's really cool to see people like you guys get involved and just do really good content, like amazing work um, with all this. Don't stuff. hear me uh, de- diminishing the pitch to say, yeah, you don't have to 
buy the the movie or, or watch it or share <laughs> yeah. it. We want you to. We right. want you to share it far and wide, and we think that, that you'll be served well and that the church will be cared for well and served well through it. So I'm not trying to undermine the But it's the not scripture or a creed. That's right. mm-hmm. So, That's right. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about um, the documentary, who it's aimed at. Um, mm-hmm. So one, who it's aimed at, and then two, why is it docu- why is this documentary uniquely kind of equipped to convince people who haven't been convinced by arguments that we've made up to this point? Yeah, in um, in our talks, like from the beginning, it's always been aimed at the pro life Christian who hasn't thought about it. Um, or maybe the pro-life Christian who is seeing the way things are going and going like, what is missing in our movement that, you know, we haven't really taken any serious steps towards abolishing abortion. Um, we've joked a little bit that we're kind of aiming at that and even maybe a little bit the guy who's, uh, um, heard of abolitionism, but doesn't want to give it a fair shake. Mm -hmm. So like we, we, we've joked that like we're aiming at David French, or something mm-hmm. like that, you know. Um, but that's really who this is for. We're we're not really here necessarily to make like a robust polemic, but really to present it in a really faithful way and hopefully pull on your heartstrings and really um, use. I don't want to like say we're wanting to emotionally manipulate <laughs> you into joining the abolition movement, but um, here to hear first. Yeah, yeah, that's what this is all about, you know. <laughs> Um, that really kind of is, that's art, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, well, you, you've got both. So you've got the really good artwork, the really good kind of stories of people's lives that mm-hmm. really tug up people's heartstrings, but you've got the ideas. Like you've yeah. got the five tenets and, you know, you and Brett and, and Russell and people explaining the ideas. And so there, there is a very persuasive aspect and I think it was done very, very well, but there's also, like you said, the artistic right, to, yeah. to draw out the emotional response. So it did, mm-hmm. it did both really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. There's like kind of this, uh, try not to be pretentious here, but you know, you look at art in the history of Christianity, how it was an outgrowth of beauty that you saw in the scripture, like and truth and goodness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like <clears throat> I just, uh, my wife and I just went and watched Handel's Messiah last night. Um, and man, this was, this is like a, a cornerstone of Western civilization or whatever, but it's also just, a, a view of the gospel that it forces me to make art. It's like, it's not um, that Christian art should be this cheap knockoff of what the secular world has come up with, but rather it's something true and meaningful that's just a direct outgrowth of a view of God, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So no, that's, that's, that's something I hope, uh, like, I embody for the rest of my life, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So maybe a, as a pastor, um, the the story of, of pastors coming on board is a big part of the story, uh, especially here in Oklahoma, right, where there's kind of, you know, the, the film very much featured you and Brett and Chris Gore um, and some Oklahoma guys and, and, and Kelly Green as well. Blake Gideon. Uh, Blake Gideon, yep, yep, Blake Gideon. And so um, talk about, um, I, think, I think there are some ways in which this is kind of theologically aimed at people who are very theologically minded, so maybe including pastors. Hmm. Um, and so talk about, uh, just from a pastor's perspective, if a pastor's watching this, you know, what were you trying to get them to get out of the documentary? Yeah, so I was just just came from an interview uh, for a film with Callie, um, C.R. Callie on hmm. IVF, and we talked about, you know, in vitro fertilization is something that a lot of us are just learning about, and mm-hmm. we're learning about the the really uh, the awful things that happen and God shapes his bride through the word, through the preaching of the word. And he shapes those preachers of the word first often, Mm -hmm. not that it doesn't happen in other ways, but he's often shaping the preacher who's going to preach the word to the body and the body is going to be shaped together. But he often leads uh, through the the elders who are repenting and and receiving that word and being broken and contrite and then trying to walk in faith and one of the fruits of that faithfulness is actually preaching what we know we have to apply mm-hmm. so god's targeting our apathy our complacency mm-hmm. first in order to shape his people mm-hmm. um, and that is that's the case with with this topic as well uh 
so we were we're targeting those men that God is targeting in his word anyway he mm-hmm. he puts he equips elders and places them as overseers of the church so that the church would grow in holiness and mm-hmm. he's but there's they have a standard for character of holiness as well mm-hmm. and first so as the so the culture goes the way of the church and the church itself the the pews if you want go the way of the pulpit and there's a there's a backward working if if the government is writing laws that promote murder of some children but protection of others then that's an outworking of where the culture is the culture says this is what we want and so the government says well this is what you deserve mm-hmm. and as the the culture then is a response to what God's people are demanding or not. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a picture of apathy or holiness. Mm-hmm. The culture is sort of give us a give us Barabbas type thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So if you if you really want to see the church rise up, you have to see the pastors bow down, mm-hmm. and hit their knees, good. Mm. and not just hit their knees and say, "I confess my apathy and complacency." But to get up, and the fruit of that repentance is lifestyle of worship that opens their mouth to their people, but also goes Mm -hmm. and continues in that faith. Uh, So, you know, whether that's adoption or going to the murder mill or leading your congregation to go to the Capitol or to meet with your legislators, um, it, it means those things too. Mm-hmm. Um, so really it's a reach to the church, but man, God has ordained that the normal and natural movement of the church goes through the brokenness of his elders, his human means for their leadership uh, first and then mm-hmm. the church. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you guys demonstrated that just so again, this, the, the beauty of repentance, you know, you, you and Brett uh, of apathy and then Blake repenting of being, you know, one of the, chief anti-abolitionist in the state of Oklahoma. And that, that was that the, the Blake story was done really, really well. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I, I hope pastors see that and they uh, kind of heed Brett's call as we saw in the trailer, you know, repent yeah. with us. You know, this is something, this is a blind spot. It's, it's easy to be a blind spot. And, and it, there's hardly a person alive today who didn't have a point at which it was a blind spot for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so just to see uh, you guys doing that and just doing it so in such a heartfelt manner is, I think, I think it's going to have a, it's going to bear a lot of fruit in terms of pastors and churches uh, coming on board. Yeah, pretty so. Uh, so yeah. on the subject of pastors, um, I would really encourage people and we'll, we'll get to in a minute where the documentary is being hosted and how they can, uh, where they can find the link and how to watch it and all that. But one thing I want to encourage people in is get this in front of your pastors. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Dusty, we talked about on one of the previous episodes we had you on how Josh Wall being in your church and bringing abolitionism abolitionism to you is what led to to you becoming an abolitionist Mm -hmm. um and so this is a thing that pastors will get you know if if it's um you know not necessarily in every case but this thing was done really really well explained well done well artistically um and the ideas are true and i think if this gets in front of people who really um who really care about god's word and and really care about their preborn neighbors i think it's going to resonate really really well Mm -hmm. um and so we've got here with us, you know, right now, you know, pastor whose uh, whose whose activism is the fruit of someone in your congregation being being faithful uh, to, to to bring this stuff to you. And so, just encourage everybody, bring this to your pastors. Um, if you want to buy it for your pastor and you know, let your pastor watch it, or encourage the pastor to buy it and and play it for the church or however, but get this in front of your pastors. Really, really important stuff. Yeah, I mm-hmm. think a lot of pastors. You know, it's one thing to have a conversation with folks, and it's just a lot to take in sometimes, especially if you're presenting something new. Mm-hmm. And then, then you have to go back and study it, or, gosh, I've got a sermon that's coming here, and I've got a Bible study that's coming here, and I've got all these counseling meetings or whatever. But what this can be a tool to work through a, a broader theological scope, but also storyline and flesh some of these doctrines and some of these points that he can he can take and really process through on his own time and then sit down and talk with his wife or the other elders and really process through together without having to have a 
a uh, like a, a study session mm. and and focus all the all the pastors or his leadership team on mm. we're going to take a season and study this topic out well this is going to get you really far down the road in a very er- rapid you know time frame yep. in yep. an hour and a half um, and I think it's a real good handle for really ministering to your pastors and then hopefully your broader congregation and on those lines we want to uh, let people know that if, if you have talked with your pastor or you're a pastor who uh, has seen this or you want to see it or you want to show your congregation, reach out to us because we, the pastors who are involved here in Oklahoma in this documentary and in abolitionism, want to make ourselves available to come to your church, show the documentary, bring Nathan along, show the documentary, and do a Q&A. Uh, and really see this spread throughout Oklahoma. If I mean, consider if we had ten thousand people at Abolition Day, February eighth, mm-hmm. at the Capitol, ten thousand Christians praying, singing, talking to their legislators about the horrors of child sacrifice and abortion in our state, and demanding immediate abolition of abortion without exception or compromise. What might the Lord do? Mm. 10,000 is very minuscule, very minuscule numbers. Whenever mm-hmm. you consider how many, even people profess to be Southern Baptist, 580,000 yeah. profess mm-hmm. to be Southern Baptist. Yep. Yeah. And with 1400, uh, 1700 churches in Oklahoma, if you had one family from every single SBC church, just the SBC churches, you'd have well over 5,000 people uh, at Abolition Day. And so, yeah, let's get into it. Like, how, how do we get this in front of people? How do we, uh, what, where do people need to go to get, see the documentary? What can they do as far as church engagement? Um, you mentioned uh, possibly having screenings and, and mm-hmm. Q&As and that sort of thing. Uh, how do they get the ball rolling on that kind of thing? Yeah, I think one of the the lowest hanging fruit on this is we have a bigly group mm-hmm. of people that are already highly active. You know, mm-hmm. they go to to mills and they go to the street corners and they are faithful. So if they just shared it within their networks, um, whether that's on social media or email or get a get a e- even if right now we don't have the DVDs produced yet. But even if they just print up a QR code and handed it to people or mm-hmm. took it to their churches that, that's something simple that mm-hmm. the group who is highly motivated and very active right now could already do. Yep. So that's just one very basic, simple idea. Mm-hmm. Yep. And people need to do that. You know, when, when, there's a, when there's a new thing, like you said, the people who are active do get active. So when you know, mm-hmm. Babies Are Murdered here comes out, everyone's putting that everywhere. When Dr. Nabalum comes out, everyone's you know, all excited. And this, this is that thing. Like, this is the thing that everyone needs to be focused on promoting, on emailing, posting on social media, uh, sending it to their, their favorite Christian publications. We've got to get the word out there about this. Um, and so just be sharing it as much as is humanly possible. The link we will have in the description uh, yep. of, of this video. Um, and so that, that is the link that, uh, that needs to be being shared. And then once there's DVDs, you can just buy a bunch of DVDs and hand them out to pastors, Christians, anyone and everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to try to tag in with some on some mailers around the state of Oklahoma, really target our state. But I just want to encourage uh, people, wherever you are, if, if you pray and ask the Lord, how can I get this out there? How can I get the word of the gospel of repentance and what it looks like to rescue those who are being carried off to slaughter in this fashion? How can I get the word out? The Lord will provide you more ideas than you can probably finance. Um, so just never don't forsake the day of small beginnings. Start doing something, uh, something small. If you need help, then reach out to us at Rescue Those. Uh, you can go through our Facebook page. You can go rescue those at gmail.com. Uh, you can look at us on rescue those.com. Um, so just reach out to us if you need help to try to get the word out. We, we've got a minimal amount of financial resources, but we want to spend them. We held it back for this purpose. So mm-hmm. we, uh, as a fruit of your prayers, if we can come alongside what you are doing, to spread the word and we want to help however we can. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. And yeah. That's another important point for people. Another reason to go watch it is that the money that comes in from that, mm-hmm. that's going to help you guys promote it more and, and, yep. and do more marketing. And so just by seeing it, uh, you're helping yourself understand the ideas. You're, you, you're able to show it to others and you're helping them yep. promote it more, get it in front of yep. more people. Yeah. And those who have seen it, they know how really incredible it is. And just, just picture yep. a world in which Nathan Weiser is able to work full-time making abolitionist type uh, yeah. movies and stuff. That is that is a world that I want to live in. So uh, yeah, We do yeah. have plans for more. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Uh, we, have, we have several ideas that we hope to bring to fruition. Yeah. And They're still in the oven at the moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we have a lot of material currently mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. that we can already get a head start on some of these things. But And, you know, we've been talking with the founders of Lore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, John Speed and Marcus Pittman about hosting, about them hosting this on their platform because they are developing a Christian parallel structure for, for high quality content. And, you know, their, their tagline is Christian movies shouldn't suck. Mm-hmm. And I think this is a good example of that mm-hmm. beauty yeah. uh, that's from a Christian standpoint that's got truth and beauty and goodness wrapped up really well. Not that it's perfect. There are things that I'm sure Nathan's like, oh, every time he watches it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we want to create more, and we want to uh, really tell other stories that w- we're prayerful that would bring uh, the grace of repentance. God would use it for those for those things and bear much fruit. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So this has been a, a little bit shorter of an episode than usual, and the reason uh, that we were trying to do that is because instead of us talking about it for a whole hour and a half, we want you guys all, everyone listening to this, wherever, YouTube, Facebook, the, the apps, podcasting apps, wherever you're listening to this, get off of that, go watch uh, this documentary description. The, the Vimeo link is in the description, um, and sh- watch it and share it with as many people as you possibly can. Yeah. Make it your number one abolition task for at least the next couple of weeks, if not months. Uh, this is extremely, extremely important stuff, and we need you guys' help with this. Mm-hmm. And we're um, going to have these mugs. These mugs. Yep. Take a drink of this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, we're going to have these mugs on uh, Rescue Those, and we've got shirts that have that on there, and how... Yeah. how uh, awful an oversight it was that you aren't wearing your shirt Jay. i know <laughs> <laughs> me either i'd get something on it but they're beautiful shirts yep. and they're uh huge shirts bigly shirts <laughs> lovely they're shirts big. there's they're never been larges. one they're all this, extra large. this beautiful um, <laughs> they're they're uh, glorious shirts uh, that will cover your body like all the other shirts uh and we'll have those on sale and we'll have hoodies uh other merch, swag, what do you call it these days, Gen Zer? Merch. 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 We're going to have a merch shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's all at rescuethose.com? Yep. Cool. Yep. So rescuethose.com. Uh, Vimeo link is in the description. Um, and next week, we are going to kind of stay on the topic of the documentary. We're going to have one of the kind of stars, uh, key interviewees mm-hmm. of the documentary with us next week, Heather Fry. Mm-hmm. And so go watch it so that uh, you have context for everything we're going to be talking about next week. Yeah. yeah. This has been the Liberator Podcast, where we're committed to being as harsh as truth and as uncompromising as justice. We'll see you next week. Do it. <laughs> <laughs>